Okay. So, we continue with uh, the biological theories of crime causation. Dito na tayo sa eugenics and sterilization of criminals. So, in theory, eugenics argued for the improvement of human genetic qualities. Positive eugenics aims to increase the reproduction of desirable qualities and negative eugenics uh, aims to discourage the reproduction of undesirable qualities to improve humanity and society. So basically, ang eugenics, uh, ito yung pag, uh, sabihin na natin pag-debreed. Familiar na ba siguro kayo sa term na breed, no? So, ito yung nag-debreed sila ng, se selectively para yung ma-produce ng mga offspring ay, ito nga, yung sabi dyan, merong mga desirable qualities at para mapigilan yung mga offspring na may negative qualities. Ganun siya. So, kung baga, namimili sila sino bang dapat ipanganak, sino ang hindi. Okay. So, uh, the underlying premise is that both positive and negative traits are inherited and passed down through generations. Early eugenicists focused on traits such as intelligence and on hereditary diseases or defects presumed to, to be genetic. This eugenicists following uh, Galton's, Francis Galton's philosophies focused on societal changes to encourage reproduction among those with positive traits and to discourage reproduction among those with negative traits. Kung maalala ninyo yung topic natin sa um, pedigree, yung tungkol sa pag, uh, ano to, na ipapasa ang mga katangian sa mga anak, sa kanyang lahi. Diba? Yung Dukes uh, family, yung Calicac family, and the Edwards family. Uh, ito yon sinasabi na yung mga may magagandang quality, sila lang ang ine-encourage na mag-reproduce. But then, yung mga, uh, sabi na natin, may sakit, yung mga may uh, criminal uh, qualities, ay hindi or dinediscourage daw ang pagre-reproduce nila. Kasi, kumbaga, dadami lang sila. Kumbaga, dadami lang yung salot sa mundo. Something like that. Okay. Between 1907 and 1914, Several states had passed sterilization laws. Laughlin, however, perceived this as ineffective and full of holes, prompting him in 1922 to draft a model law that was passed by 18 additional states. In this model law, Laughlin defined the populations that would be targeted by forced sterilization. Tinukon nila ano yung mga lugar kung saan... Uh, implement nila itong forced sterilization including criminals, the very poor, epileptics, alcoholic, the blind, the deaf, and insane, and those who had a physical deformity. These practices were upheld as constitutional by the U.S. Supreme Court in 1927 in the case of Buck v. Bell and continued until 1981. So, naipatupad nga ito. More than 64,000 individuals in 33 states were forcibly sterilized under these laws. With increased immigration came increased concerns about the quality and purity of the races. Uh, katulad nung nabanggit natin last, last topic, merong isang island na madaming immigrants and doon sa mga, doon sa island na yun, madaming may uh, health problems and mostly uh, yung mga immigrants talaga. Okay? So, responding to these concerns, Madison Grant, an American lawyer, wrote one of the first and most influential books about racial integrity, The Passing of the Great Race. Grant wrote that the Nordic, or the white people racial line, the Nordic racial line was the pinnacle of civilization. He warned against mis miscegenation, or race mixing, and supported legislation against it. Ayaw nila na magkaroon ng mga mixed race. Uh, he argued for racial hygiene because the Nordic race was superior to any other and any mixing would taint Nordic bloodlines, making them impure. So ang paniniwala nila, yung mga white, ay yung mga, kumbaga sa gamit sila na yung pinaka-high class. 
So, baga, o sa sasakyan sila na yung top of the line. At kapag hinaluan mo sila, hindi na sila puro. Uh, yun na nga, nagiging impure sila at hindi daw maganda yon sabi niya. So, he also warned that undesirable breed. Undesirables breed in greater numbers and would overrun the superior Nordic population. Kasi mas marami, uh, mas madami daw ang um, population ng mga undesirables na yon At kapag patuloy silang nag-reproduce, ma- mas dadami na daw sila kesa doon sa mga Nordic na yun. He advocated the eradication of undesirables from the human gene pool coupled with the promulgation of more desirable and worthy racial types. Sino siya para sabihin higit ang isang race <laughs> kesa sa iba? Grant's work was immensely popular and was instrumental in the drafting and passage of the Immigration Act of 1924 which restricted the numbers of immigrants from the less desirable regions such as Southern and Eastern Europe. His book also was translated into several languages. In 1925, it was translated into German, in which Nordic was replaced by the word Aryan. Uh, Adolf Hitler, who read the book shortly after its translation into German, would later call Grant's work his Bible. Ayan na. Familiar naman siguro kayo kay Adolf Hitler. So in 1928, uh, with sterilization laws, yeah. in 1928, with sterilization laws and immigration restrictions in full swing, uh, Gosni founded the Human Betterment Foundation, an entity whose primary purpose was to compile and distribute propaganda about compulsory sterilization. Gosni hired Paul Opno to assist him in the study of the impact of the sterilization laws in California. Their collaboration resulted in the publication of Sterilization for Human Betterment, a summary of results of 6,000 operations in California used by Nazi Germany to support its 1934 law for the prevention of hereditarily diseased offspring. May batas na ganun sa kanila. Furthermore, these arguments were used to justify policies of racial hygiene and racial cleaning that Nazi Germany enacted against Jews and other undesirable or unfit persons who did not meet the model of the Aryan ideal. The Nuremberg Laws, enacted in 1935, consisted of the law for the protection of German blood and German honor and the Reich citizenship laws, which prohibited the mixing of German with Jews uh, and stripped so-called undesirables of their citizenship. So, basta hindi daw German, uh, inalisan nila ng citizenship. So, hindi na sila uh, um, German citizens. So, although population control policies based on eugenics enjoyed widespread support in many countries prior to World War II, Nazi use of its philosophies to justify the eradication of approximately 6 million Jews and an additional 3 to 5 million others brought an immediate halt to its proliferation. However, sterilizations, marriage restrictions based on fitness, and prohibitions of racial intermarriage continued for de- decades. Uh, Tayo man, ba? Matagal na naglagi dito sa bansa ang mga Spanish. Kaya nga, yung iba sa atin, meron pang, I think, ito lang naman, ay paniniwala ko na majority siguro sa atin ay may lahi din na uh, Spaniard, especially yung mga mapupute na Pilipino. May halo yun sila. Hey. Uh, marriage counseling, ironically developed by Paul Pogno, was as a eugenic tactic to ensure marriage between fit individuals also became a viable area of practice. Despite the fact that the word 
Eugenics is usually avoided. Modern efforts to improve humanity's gene pool persist. The Human Genome Project is one notable scientific effort to understand the genetic makeup and properties of human beings with an eye toward eradicating or preventing inheritable diseases and defects. Advances in science and the development of ethical guidelines provide hope that struggles to better understand the transmission and development of human traits and characteristics are not yet abandoned. This is especially important in the future of biological theories of criminality. Okay, that's it for eugenics. Dito na tayo sa XYY syndrome or the super male gene. So Jacobs in 1965 suggested that men with the XYY syndrome uh, were more aggressive than normal XY men. XYY men are overrepresented in the prison population. There are 15 sufferers per 1,000 in prisons and one per 1,000 in the general population. Okay. Uh, the male, ano to? The male gene is XY. Uh, uh, specifically, yung Y. Yun yung nagiging, uh, yun yung masasabi natin para sa lalaki yun. And yung X ay sabihin na natin para sa girls. Okay, so XYY, dalawa yung Y niya. Kaya siya uh, tinutukoy na super male kasi sobra yung pagkalalaki niya. Anong nangyayari kapag may XYY uh, gene ang isang lalaki? XYY men have lower intelligence. And it could be this that leads to aggression. So sa sobrang pagkalalaki ng isang taong may XYY syndrome, nagiging aggressive siya. Ayun. Kaya, sabi nga dyan, yung mga nasa prison daw, madami may XYY syndrome. And usually, itong mga taong to ay yung mga may uh, history of violence. Okay. A Danish study which screened 4,591 men for the presence of XYY, found only 12 cases. Whilst these individuals were indeed more likely to be involved in crime than chance would have predicted, uh, it was not involved. It was not involvement in violent crime. Their conclusion was that the overrepresentation of XYY males in prison and special hospitals was more likely to be the result of other characteristics: their low intelligence, above average height. Kumbaga, mga matatangkad sila, pero medyo mahina ang unta. And the social reaction that these characteristics may have produced. Some men thought that to have the XYY syndrome have later been found to be XY, causing problems with studies. Key symptoms of XYY are being unusually tall and suffering from acne and scars. Some men have been incorrectly classified as XYY on this evidence alone. Yung basta matangkad. May XYY syndrome yan. Hindi naman. Kaya nagkaroon na problems dun sa mga research nila. Another chromosome theory is the long Y theory. Individuals with an elongated Y chromosome were higher on a delinquency scale. Okay, so yun. Pag-usapan natin ang intelligence. And... Dito naman tayo sa intelligence and crime. So it seems to us that in intelligence, there is a fundamental faculty, the alteration of the lack of which is, the, is of the utmost importance for practical life. This faculty is judgment. Pagkaroon ng ability na maghusga, makapagdesisyon. Otherwise called good sense, practical sense, initiative and uh, the faculty of adapting oneself to circumstances. A person may be a moron or an imbecile if he is lacking in judgment. But with good judgment, he can never be either. Indeed, the rest of the intellectual faculty seem of little importance in comparison with judgment. So, ito yun. Pag ang IQ score mo is over 140, your genius or near genius. Pag 120 to 130, very superior. Natry nyo na ba mag-IQ test? Meron online. 
Then, meron din yung mga uh, binibigay ng school, ng uh, psychologist. Yeah. Uh, 110 to 119, superior. 90 to 109, average or normal. 80 to 89, dull. Pero ang tawag na ngayon, dull, normal. And then, 70 to 79, ang tawag na ngayon is mild mental retardation. Kung maalala ninyo yung topic natin nung uh, midterms pa lang. 50 to 69 is moron or moderate mental retardation. 20 to 29, imbecile. And now it's called severe mental retardation. And below 20 is idiot or the profound mental retardation. Etong mga mabababa ang IQ, hindi rin sobrang hina nilang makaintindi and uh, some ano to, uh, functions in your daily life, hindi rin nila magawa. Ayan. Grade 3 ata ako nun. 120 ang IQ ko. Ngayon, di ko sure. Ayan. Crime and the bell curve. Bell curve, Intelligence and Class Structure in American Life is a 1994 book by psychologist Richard Herrnstein and political scientist Charles Murray in which the authors argue that human intelligence is substantially influenced by both inherited and environmental factors and that it is a better predictor of many personal dynamics including financial income, jump performance, birth out of wedlock, and involvement in crime than are an individual's parental socioeconomic status. They also argue that those with high intelligence, the cognitive elite, yung mga matatalino, are becoming separated from those of average and below average intelligence. Ayun, ang um, sinasabi lang dyan na ang intelligence na mamana and may contribution din ang environment. Kasi kahit naman mo, kung hindi naman siya na-nurture, kung hindi naman, sabi na natin, napangalagaan yung, yung naman mong intelligence na yun, um, mag-iiba ang course ng buhay mo. Kumbaga. And ayun na nga. Low IQ is a known risk factor for crime and delinquency. Talagang um, standard yan sa mga theories ng crime causation. Pag mababa ang intelligence, mas mataas ang chance na makakomit siya ng crime or na maging criminal siya. But a new study by Robert Goodman suggests that even when IQs are in the nor low normal range, these scores are linked to stealing, lying, and other symptoms of conduct disorder. Tests revealed that lower IQ in his sample of normal IQ subjects was linked to conduct disorder, a link which was stronger in teens than in younger children. In Goodman's sample, the mean IQ of children with conduct disorders was nearly 10 points lower than that of children with emotional disorders. Conduct is how you behave. Emotional disorders is how you uh, feel. And children with mixed disorders of conduct and emotion fell in between. The IQ effect remained true when Goodman controlled for socioeconomic status and for reading ability, which he says indicates that the link between low IQ and conduct problems was not wholly attributable to social class or entirely mediated by scholastic attainment. Other studies also link low IQ to violent behavior, delinquency, and adult crime. In fact, as Bruce Bauer recently noted in Science News, intelligence deficits, uh, deficits make up one of the most firmly established characteristics of criminal offenders as a whole. But critics suggest that this may simply mean that high IQ criminals are more likely to avoid capture. Yun din naman. Hindi lahat ng criminal ay mababa ang IQ. Hindi lahat ng criminal ma ay ano to, bobo. May mga criminal na sobrang talino naman. At yung mga taong ganito, yung mga criminal na sobrang talino naman, 
of course, alam na nila kung paano nila matatakasan yung uh, krimen na gagawin nila. O, uh, kumbaga, may knowledge sila sa law, may knowledge sila sa forensics, at kung ano-ano pa. Okay? The... Ako. But, uh, a new study by Peter Giancola and Amos Zeitner, however, suggests that IQ and aggression are strongly linked even in non-criminal males. The results of their study bolster study bolster the hypothesis that a higher IQ or being able to think clearly protects against the expression of antisocial or aggressive behavior. 